Dr. Patrick Kamath from the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, presents this module that is part of the cirrhosis unit of the Fundamentals of Liver Disease. The title of this module is, Does My Patient Have Cirrhosis? I have no disclosures. At the conclusion of the program, you should be able to define cirrhosis identify causes of cirrhosis, describe the clinical features, and understand non-invasive diagnostic criteria for cirrhosis, as well as outline complications. Cirrhosis is the final pathway for a wide variety of chronic liver diseases. It is a pathological entity defined by diffuse hepatic fibrosis with replacement of the normal hepatic architecture by nodules. Progression to chronic liver, of chronic liver disease to cirrhosis is quite variable from weeks in patients with complete biliary obstruction to years to decades in patients with chronic hepatitis C. Cirrhosis is a leading cause of mortality during the most productive years of life. The panel on the left shows you the normal liver. The panel on the right is a cirrhotic liver characterized by nodules. Notice it no longer has the smooth outline of the normal liver on the left. There is also diffuse fibrosis. The term cirrhosis comes from a Greek word kiros, which means tawny, which alludes to the peculiar color a cirrhotic liver has. The normal liver on histopathology has plates of hepatocytes that are arranged in a concentric fashion around the portal tract as can be seen with the blue curved arrow on the left. The panel on the right is the histopathology in cirrhosis with the normal hepatic architecture is replaced by diffuse fibrosis demonstrated by the black curved arrows with nodular regeneration as demonstrated by the arrowheads. The common causes of cirrhosis are viral, hepatitis C in the West, but hepatitis B worldwide, alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and hemochromatosis. Of these, the three most common causes of cirrhosis are viral, alcoholic liver disease, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Less common causes of cirrhosis are biliary causes such as biliary atresia and secondary biliary cirrhosis, metabolic causes such as Wilson disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and galactosemia, and hepatic venous outflow obstruction, such as in the bud chiari syndrome or with cardiac cirrhosis. The clinical features of cirrhosis are predominantly seen in patients with decompensated cirrhosis. Patients with compensated cirrhosis may be entirely asymptomatic, the symptoms and signs that we commonly associate with cirrhosis are usually seen only in decompensated cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is decompensated in the presence of ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, variceal bleeding, or jaundice. The physical findings suggestive of cirrhosis are spider nevi, palmar erythema, Terry nails, clubbing, carotid enlargement, gynecomastia, and caput medusae. These features may be entirely absent in patients with compensated cirrhosis. First, spider nevi. A spider nevus is a dilated arteriole characterized by a prominent central arteriole, as you can see on the panel on the right with radiating vessels, and these spiders are usually found in the distribution of the superior vena cava. 
if the central arteriole is compressed, there is blanching of the spider, and more than three spiders is considered abnormal. Palmer erythema is the intense red coloration of the thena and the hypothena eminence. Terry nails are characterized by proximal nail bed pallor. The involvement can be of the entire nail plate and typically the predominant involvement is of the thumb and index finger. When clubbing is seen in a patient with cirrhosis, the association is with hepatopulmonary syndrome. Gynecomastia is enlargement of male breasts with palpable tissue. Here you see three features that are commonly seen in patients with decompensated cirrhosis. Ten societies, an umbilical hernia, and caput medusae, which are dilated veins radiating from the umbilicus. These dilated veins flow away from the umbilicus and are related to patency of the umbilical vein. The flow in these veins is towards the superior vena cava in the supraumbilical region and towards the inferior vena cava in the infraumbilical region. Caput medusae are not seen with prehepatic causes of portal hypertension, such as portal vein thrombosis. How is cirrhosis diagnosed? Cirrhosis should be suspected in any patient who has variceal bleeding, ascites, or hepatic encephalopathy. Cirrhosis is also suspected in patients who, on physical examination, have splenomegaly, spider nevi, Hama erythema, and parotid enlargement. On laboratory testing, thrombocytopenia should alert you to the possibility of cirrhosis. Thrombocytopenia, in fact, is often the first laboratory abnormality noted. The AST is higher than the ALT in cirrhosis and should be suspected in any patient with non-alcoholic liver disease. A low albumin or elevated INR are again pointers towards cirrhosis. On abdominal imaging, a nodular liver, collaterals, splenomegaly, and ascites should make you worry about cirrhosis. And on endoscopy, varices may be seen as shown in the next slide. This slide shows you dilated veins at the lower end of the esophagus. These veins are tortuous and consistent with esophageal varices. Imaging could also alert you to the possibility of cirrhosis, both ultrasound and computed tomography. On ultrasound, the surface of the liver may appear nodular, and in this slide is demonstrated by the white arrows. On computed tomography, the surface of the liver is irregular. The arrow demonstrates the enlarged left lobe of the liver and the black arrow, the collateral circulation. The star demonstrates the large spleen. A nodular liver, an enlarged left lobe of the liver, an enlarged spleen and collaterals are all features of cirrhosis. So what is the approach to diagnosis of compensated cirrhosis? A combination of clinical, laboratory and radiological features are most helpful in making an accurate diagnosis of cirrhosis. However, patients with compensated cirrhosis may lack any of the physical examination, laboratory, or imaging abnormalities outlined previously. In such situations, laboratory-based scoring systems may be helpful in diagnosis. The simple laboratory-based scoring systems are the APRI score, the FIB4 score, and the Bonaccini score. The APRI which is the AST platelet ratio index, is calculated by taking the ratio of the AST 
to the upper limit of normal AST and dividing that by the platelet count and multiplying by 100. An opry of less than 1 makes cirrhosis very unlikely. An opry of less than 1 has very high negative predictive value. An opry score of greater than 2 suggests the presence of cirrhosis, but the positive predictive value is not as high. The formula for this FIB score is given in this slide. A FIB4 score less than 1.45 indicates that cirrhosis is very unlikely, whereas a FIB score of 3.25 or greater suggests the presence of cirrhosis. Again, with this score, negative predictive value is much higher than positive predictive value. The Bonaccini cirrhosis discriminant score uses the platelet count, ALT to AST ratio, and the INR. The score for the platelet count ranges between 0 and 6. For the ALT AST ratio, between 0 and 3, and for the INR, between 0 and 2. For example, a patient with a platelet count of 40,000 and ALT-AST ratio of 0 0.6 and an INR of 1.4 has a Bonaccini cirrhosis discriminant score of 11, very likely to have cirrhosis. A score of greater than 7 indicates a high probability of cirrhosis, and a score of less than 3, a low probability of cirrhosis. So to summarize, the scores indicating cirrhosis or advanced fibrosis status, there is a high probability of cirrhosis or advanced fibrosis. If the APRI score is greater than 2, the FIB4 score is greater than 3.25, and the Bonaccini score is greater than 7. On the other hand, it is very likely that cirrhosis is absent. If the APRI score is less than 1, the FIB4 score less than 1.45, and the Bonaccini score less than 3. Liver stiffness measurements are increasingly being used to diagnose cirrhosis. There are several different techniques used. Transient elastography is the most commonly used, and a liver stiffness of greater than 13 kilopascals is suggestive of cirrhosis. If acoustic radiation force impulse is the tool used, a stiffness greater than 2.6 meters per second suggests cirrhosis. On MR elastography, stiffness greater than 5 kilopascals is suggestive of cirrhosis. It must be emphasized that these techniques are less reliable in the presence of hepatic inflammation, elevated liver enzymes, hepatic congestion, or infiltration. The transient elastogram is a point-of-care test. It's an ultrasound-based technique which is used to determine the liver stiffness. Liver stiffness increases with worsening cirrhosis and is also predictive of complications such as the development of esophageal varices. Transient elastography is simple to use, but it must be emphasized that there are several newer methods being investigated which might be superior to transient elastography. Additionally, transient elastography is not reliable in obese patients and is influenced by inflammation. A liver biopsy is not required for diagnosis in decompensated cirrhosis. If the patient has features of decompensated cirrhosis, the diagnosis of cirrhosis is clear and a liver biopsy should not be carried out. In compensated cirrhosis, however, a liver biopsy can provide a diagnosis as well as possible etiology. However, <clears throat> a liver biopsy is expensive 
There are procedure-related complications of the order of about 1%, and these complications include pain, bleeding, and hollow viscous perforation, though mortality is exceedingly low. A sampling error may give an erroneous diagnosis, and a liver biopsy requires expertise both in conduction of the liver biopsy as well as in reading of the biopsy. This slide summarizes the algorithm to assess the presence of cirrhosis. If on history and physical examination, routine blood tests and hepatic imaging, you note that the patient has varicell hemorrhage, ascites, and encephalopathy, with or without a platelet count of less than 100,000, <clears> and AST greater than the ALT, the liver looks cirrhotic on imaging, and there are varices noted on endoscopy. The patient has cirrhosis, and a liver biopsy is not required. If the diagnosis of cirrhosis is unclear, fibrosis assessment may be carried out by liver stiffness and or fibrosis serum scores. If these readings are reliable, and in agreement with the clinical picture, then the patient is diagnosed to have cirrhosis, and again, there's no need for a liver biopsy. On the other hand, if there's disagreement between the various investigations, or the scores are unreliable, or if these techniques are unavailable, and at the end, there is still diagnostic uncertainty, then a liver biopsy should be carried out. The major complications of cirrhosis, which give rise to mortality, are portal hypertension related, namely varicell bleeding, ascites, and hepatic encephalopathy, malignancy, hepatocellular carcinoma, and cholangiocarcinoma, and infections. The other complications of cirrhosis include acute kidney injury, the hepatorenal syndrome, cardiopulmonary, portopulmonary hypertension, which is a hemodynamic problem giving rise to right ventricular failure, and hepatopulmonary syndrome, which is an oxygenation defect. Vascular problems such as portal vein thrombosis, gastrointestinal bleeding, neuropsychiatric complications like depression and muscle cramps, hematological such as hypersplenism, bleeding and hypercoagulation problems, metabolic including adrenal insufficiency and sexual dysfunction, sleep problems both insomnia and hypersomnia, and fatigue. The causes of death in patients with decompensated cirrhosis include further decompensation, giving rise to multi-organ failure, sometimes termed acute and chronic liver failure, malignancy, and infections. In patients with compensated cirrhosis, death is related to non-hepatic causes. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and I invite you to access additional content on liver learning on this topic or any other related topics at your leisure. Thank you.